What are you doing, Professor? I had hoped that recent events would have improved things, but the gaming industry is as corrupt as ever. Oh no. What have they done now? They've reached a whole new low at this one. It is Electronic Arts, and what they've done sets a very dangerous precedent. Well, this is Electronic Arts. What did they do, though? They announced a collector's edition for Battlefield 1 that does not include a copy of the game. Wait. What? Say again. You have to buy a copy of the game separately if you get the Battlefield 1 Collector's Edition. You're right, they have reached a new low. You would think they would understand the simple principle of incentivizing a purchase. What do you mean? Well, Chloe. Let's go to the ship of understanding and I'll explain. Two to beam up, fanbot. Acknowledge. Professor. Incentivizing a purchase means you are giving consumers a reason to buy your product. Basically, to entice people to buy your product you need to add some kind of value that will get a consumer's interest. This can be a service, which is common with the enterprise software market and it is the whole business model behind the so-called Internet of Things. Another option is to include extras, like pre-order bonuses which are now a gaming industry standard. In music, the band Radiohead innovated the way independent artists sell music by promoting the connect with fans, incentive to buy strategy. I remember that. Trent Reznor offered portions of the band's new album Ghosts for free and had a higher priced limited edition with lots of extras which sold out in record time. Madonna did something very similar, and there are hundreds of successful artists selling their music on iTunes and SoundCloud who have no recording contracts with big labels. It all comes down to what we were talking about, giving consumers an incentive to buy. What incentive is Electronic Arts giving people to buy a $100 collector's edition box for Battlefield 1 if the game isn't included? It makes no sense, what is the point of a collector's edition for a game if it doesn't include the game? And, the bigger problem is that these things Electronic Arts tends to do gets replicated throughout the industry. They were one of the first to release unfinished games in order to sell high-priced DLC now that practice is spreading all over the industry. They aren't responsible for all of the bad practices of the big AAA studios, but they are a major force behind what is effectively destroying the gaming industry. Electronic Arts is a big, powerful company, what can we possibly do? Good question. First and foremost, stop rewarding companies who exercise in bad practices. Do not buy their games. The message can't get any clearer than that. If you complain about what they do yet you still buy their games then that makes you complicit. You are empowering the very activities you don't like, so it destroys your credibility when you complain about their practices yet buy their games anyway. It can be tempting to want to play the next Battlefield, or Call of Duty, and you might be under a lot of peer pressure to play those games with your friends. But, if we're going to change the gaming industry then gamers must be willing to make certain sacrifices. And that's by not buying games from companies who exercise in the kinds of bad practices that are hurting the gaming industry. We need to be strong, we need to stand firm, and we must not give in. We're up against powerful corporations with multi-million dollar media campaign budgets. They can pump out game trailers that rival anything out of Hollywood, and they're good at what they do. We cannot allow ourselves to be swayed and influenced by their media engine. The powerful message we can send is one that hits them in the bank account. These are companies that treat games like boxes of breakfast cereal and not as works of art. Companies that use focus groups and committees to decide what tropes they'll stitch into their games, rather than allow creative minds to do what they do best. You can tell when a company has a passion for making games, and when a company's only passion is to make money rather than making the best game possible. If you pay attention you can tell, you can literally feel it when you play their games. 
Take Sabzu, for instance. I played that. It's the game where you swim under the sea, can ride along with fish, and explore strange undersea ruins. It wasn't a long game, but it had beautiful music and despite having so many fish on screen there was almost no slowdown. So, how did you feel when you played the game? It was a wonderful, relaxing experience. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I think I get it, Professor. Anyway, the only way we'll change the gaming industry is if we all stick together and stick to our convictions. It won't be easy. I never said it would. But, look at the alternative. Do we really want to let things continue the way they are if we have the power within us to change things for the better? This extends beyond video games, but to every aspect of our lives. And with the 2016 presidential election coming this message is more important than ever. Do we elect to the highest office in the country a racist billionaire, a crooked politician who can't win her party's nomination without cheating, or do we look elsewhere for a candidate who represents the people and not the establishment? That better third party candidate is out there, you need only look to the greener side to find her. Very subtle professor. Ha ha ha. So, how is your mom settling in? Mina gave her a job with the order. Keeping records is very different work from what she used to do but I think she likes it. How's the gaming defender doing? He's adjusting slowly, but he's going to do alright I think. All we need to do is stay positive and never give in to doubt and despair. Exactly, 